Okay, welcome back to chapter three. Chapter three is primarily about um, personal hygiene and how the individual food service worker can avoid passing on um, disease or uh, bacteria um, through their work practices. So we'll review all of the, the best practices for uh, handling food and then um, proper procedure for gloves and clothes and uh, touching things. So it's important to remember your personal responsibility when working in food service. Um, a person can pass on um, diseases or they can uh, cross-contaminate products. A lot of foodborne illness comes from um, improper practices related to personal hygiene. So food handlers can contaminate food when they are sick themselves. So if they have a foodborne illness, uh, they, they need to not report to work. Uh, if they have wounds that contain a pathogen, so that could be an infected cut or something that's on your uh, skin that would come in contact with the food. Um, if you sneeze or cough on the food, uh, if you have contact with a person who is sick, if you touch anything that may contaminate their hands and don't wash them. Um, an example of that would be maybe touching chicken or a beef product and then immediately going to a ready to eat food and touching that with the same gloves without changing your gloves or without washing your hands. Um, that would uh, transfer that bacteria to an item that would not get cooked and therefore those pathogens would not die off. Um, so you would be passing on that bacteria. Um, if you have symptoms of illness, including diarrhea, vomiting, jaundice, or yellowing of the skin or eyes, so that would uh, indicate that you may have a hepatitis. So uh, jaundice is a um, very unique symptom that you get when you have hepatitis. So um, all of these things are going to be basically your ethical responsibility to make sure that you are not putting other people at risk whenever you are preparing uh, their food. So obviously the management is going to have a big uh, responsibility in making sure that uh, best practices are followed and that is going to include a training program. So whenever you um, initially begin with a business or with a, a, a culinary class, then um, your instructor or your manager needs to report to you exactly how to uh, do your job safely in order to you know have have the best results they need to also mod uh, model the correct behavior uh, an organization where they say hey we do everything right here we always wash our hands we always keep our food on temperature we, we check temperatures every you know a couple hours um, if the manager doesn't do that themselves then it's a very small chance that the people below them are going to do more than what the manager does a lot of people are going to model behavior they are going to do exactly what they see their uh, leader do uh, so it's very important to um, you know do the right thing all the time and that way um, you know the uh, people below you will understand the importance of their actions. Um, there needs to be supervision. We need to make sure that you know there is a shift lead or a manager or someone that you know, is available to correct behaviors if they see them. And then uh, you need to stay um, up on the laws and make sure that anything that possibly changes, you need to institute that immediately. Um, so that you stay in compliance with the local health authorities. So injuries in the kitchen are going to happen. Uh, there's lots of sharp things. There's lots of hot things that you can burn yourself on. Um, we just need to make sure that we safely deal with those injuries uh, quickly and um, avoid contaminating the, the food product that we're working on. So if you cut your finger and um, you're working on something, you, you need to take that knife away and you also need to remove yourself from the, the situation. 
Um, if by chance you got some of your own blood on something, then you need to dispose of that product. That does not stay. Uh, we don't cook it afterwards. It, it needs to be disposed of. Um, and then all cutting boards and uh, utensils that you are using, especially the thing that you cut yourself with, that is uh, going to have to get um, re-sanitized again before it can be used. But for yourself, you need to remove yourself from the area, move yourself away from other people so that you don't bleed on anyone else. Um, try to go to a sink so that you can wash it off. Um, get some paper towels to stop the bleeding, of course. Um, and then you're going to have to wrap your, your wound with a bandage so that uh, you can stop the bleeding. Um, we have a um, sort of like a glove just for one finger. It's called a finger cot. And that uh, can go over your finger to keep the Band-Aid dry. And it keeps the Band-Aid from, um, you know, getting food product on it or uh, any the bandage uh, touching the food. We don't want the bandage to touch the food. Um, and then over that, you use a glove. So you would have a bandage, a finger caught, and a glove over it. Um, you would not want to wash dishes um, because all that dish water would get into your glove. Um, you need to use longer gloves so that the water doesn't get into it. Um, cover your wounds uh, on other parts of the body with a dry, tight-fitting bandage. Cover wounds on the arm with an impermeable cover, such as a bandage. Um, so basically, keep your wounds covered. Um, and that's about um, all that you can do. Um, if you have a burn, you can put some burn gel on it and kind of wrap it. Um, but still, we just want to be very careful not to um, have those bandages that are on you touch any of the food items. And we want to make sure um, that any in, any injuries are covered. So if you have anything that's bleeding, anything that is cracked skin or a blister or anything like that, it needs to be covered at all times when you're working with food. Okay, so use of gloves can never be used in place of hand washing. So, you know, don't think of it as, oh, I took my gloves off after I made the hamburgers and now I'm going to go do something else. Um, there is a there's a hand wash in between. So you take your gloves off, you wash your hands, allow them to dry and then put on new fresh gloves. Um, never reuse your gloves. So if you have, um, you know, maybe taking your gloves off uh, to do another task, throw them away. Uh, go ahead and get new gloves. Um, we have plenty of them. We're not going to run out. Um, we we don't uh, leave them and then come back to them. So uh, you're going to use new gloves all the time. Make sure that the gloves are the right size for you. If the gloves are too large, then you can have a tendency to actually cut off the tips of the fingers of the gloves, and then you can end up with little bits of glove plastic in your food. Um, also, they uh, can tend to, you know, slide off and they're very uncomfortable to wear. So you want to make, we have them in all sizes. So we have um, small, medium, large, extra large. So you can make sure that the, the gloves do fit your hands properly. So you're going to use gloves when um, you're handling ready-to-eat ingredients for a dish that uh, will be cooked to the correct temperature. Um, you don't have to wash um, produce with gloves because um, your hands are going to be in the water. Um, and then when, you're, when your gloves are dirty, then you're just going to throw them away. So anytime that you're getting ready to prepare food when you're coming into the kitchen, you're always going to wash your hands first, um, put on some gloves, uh, whenever you start your task, um, hold gloves on the edge whenever you're putting them on. So, um, you know, just try to handle them as little as possible to keep them as clean as you can. Um, never try to blow into the glove to try to open them. Um, our gloves don't really stick together. They're a, they're a nylon, or I'm sorry, a vinyl glove. So they um, don't really have that issue. Um, 
And then also don't roll your gloves uh, to make them easier to put on. Sometimes it's a little more common with latex gloves. Um, but blowing into your gloves is basically you're going to be blowing, you know, your germs into the gloves, um, which is not a, a good practice. Um, avoid bare hand contact with ready to eat foods. So when you are preparing foods and the ingredients are going to be cooked, as long as you are following proper hand washing procedures where you're washing your hands in between tasks um, and after you're you know, touching things that could contaminate your hands, it's okay to touch you know, things that way. Um, if an ingredient in a dish is containing raw meat, seafood, and poultry, the dish will be cooked and required minimum internal temperature of the raw items. Never handle ready-to-eat food with bare hands when you primary, primarily serve a high-risk population. So a high-risk population, as you remember, is like pre preschoolers or elderly, if you work in a hospital or um, assisted living home. Um, those patrons of yours are going to have a higher risk for foodborne illness. So you want to take the most precautions with them. So you would never handle ready-to-eat food. Uh, without gloves if you're, if you're serving those individuals. Okay, so handling staff illness. There's two uh, categories that ServeSafe gives you, either restrict or exclude. So restrict basically means that you are reassigning someone. So we don't want them working with the food. However, it might be okay for them to bus tables or do something else in the restaurant. Um, exclude means that the food handler uh, from the operation, um, then they need to go home. Um, especially, this is especially if you uh, serve a high-risk population. A written release from a medical practitioner is required before returning to work. So that would be an, an instance where maybe you were diagnosed with a foodborne illness such as hepatitis or Shigella. Um, and then uh, you need to return to work later, you would want to make sure that all of that um, had cleared out of your system before you come back. If the food handler has at least one of these symptoms, which is vomiting or diarrhea, um, then you would have to exclude the food handler from the operation. Um, before returning to work, the food handlers who vomited or had diarrhea must meet one of these requirements. So no symptoms for 24 hours um, or written release from a medical practitioner. If your food handler has jaundice, um, this needs to be uh, reported. So this is a reportable um, illness. You had, would have to tell the um, your local food um, inspector, inspectors, the health inspectors for your uh, municipality, and you would have to let them know. Um, hepatitis is extremely, extremely contagious. So uh, those food handlers from the operation would have to be um, excluded for seven days. Um, food handlers must have a written release from a medical practitioner um, or the health uh, department in order to return to work. If your food handler is vomiting or has diarrhea and has been diagnosed with an illness caused by one of these pathogens, uh, norovirus, Shigella, Salmonella, uh, Shiga toxin producing E. coli, then uh, those are all excluded. Um, those would also require uh, you to visit a doctor and um, get a written note to return. If the, if the handler has been diagnosed with an illness caused by hepatitis or salmonella typhi, then um, exclude the food handler from the operation, uh, work with the food handler's medical practitioner, and decide when they can go back to work. So if you are washing your hands, how long do you have to wash them uh, with soap and water. 
the answer is going to be 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, so some people will sing two happy birthdays, they'll sing the alphabet song, um, something to make sure that they have washed their hands long enough. Every sink station has to have a clock with a second hand nearby um, so that you can time yourself if you need to. When do food handlers have to wash their hands? Um, the answer is going to be almost always. Um, so if you visit a restroom, um, even if it is just to check your makeup, if you walk in and out of a restroom, you're going to have to wash your hands. Um, use cutting uh, raw meat and changing tasks. Um, this person is touching their hair, so you would have to wash your hands after that. If you have to, you know, adjust your ponytail or you need to, you know, adjust your hat, then you are going to have to wash your hands. Uh, this person is sneezing, so it's it's best to direct your sneeze away from food and other people. Um, make sure that you wash your hands afterwards. Uh, this person's eating. So if you sample something that you have made, you once you go back to cooking again, you're going to have to make sure that you have washed your hands. This person is cleaning up for the night. So any time that you touch a chemical um, or you're doing a, you know, a cleanup, um, just to make sure that no chemical residue is left on your hands, you're going to have to uh, wash your hands before you return to uh, cooking. So this person is taking out the trash. So anytime that you sweep up, like you use a broom with a dustpan, or you're taking the trash out and you're touching the trash bags, um, that is all going to be um, times when you need to wash. Okay, so let's review some of the times when you would also need to wash your hands. When you're clearing dishes, um, dishes can, can contain uh, germs and viruses and pathogens from uh, other people that have eaten off of these dishes. This can spread foodborne illness if you do not uh, take the proper procedure. So dirty dishes can never be next to uh, food items where food is being prepared. It should be in a separate area. Um, also, if you are going to pr um, participate in any uh, food cooking activities, then you're going to have to wash your hands after busting a table uh, or washing dishes. Um, so this person is touching his apron and um, his clothing. So this would be another time when you would need to wash your hands. Uh, this represents touching money. So money can have um, a, a lot of uh, bacteria and um, it, it can pass um, different germs. So um, sometimes you'll see people working the drive through at a restaurant and then going right back to, you know, cooking burgers and fries. Um, that actually would, would not be considered a best, uh, best practice. The health department does not approve of that. Um, this person is uh, leaving the prep area to go into a um, storage closet. So the general rule of thumb is that anytime that you walk into the kitchen, you should be washing your hands. If you're touching uh, any type of seafood or crustaceans, uh, you need to wash your hands um, before doing any other tasks. Um, this person is um, wiping down their station. So they're touching anything that may contaminate your hands, such as dirty equipment, work surfaces, or uh, cleaning cloths. Okay, so we're gonna look at a few pictures and pick out what is wrong with them based on what we already know. So this person is assembling a burger and if we look at their hand, you should be able to notice some things that are incorrect. So this person is wearing uh, fake fingernails. 
So these are false fingernails and she also has nail polish. Both of these things are forbidden. We can't ever have these things in the kitchen. Um, she's also not wearing gloves because she's assembling a ready to eat product. This is a time when she would have to be wearing gloves because she's assembling a ready to eat food. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on in this picture. They, they are serving, um, looks like shrimp and grits. And we can see here that he does have an injury. So that finger should have a finger caught and it should also have a glove. Um, also, if you look at how he's holding the plate, it's best practice to hold it from the bottom right on the edge so that um, your thumb is not really in the plate. Um, that for one, it you know you don't want fingerprints on top of your plate, and, and also you don't want to uh, spread germs to the the surface of the plate, which is where you know you would consider people are eating off the surface of the plate. Okay, so this is a big one: um, jewelry in the kitchen. So you can only have a plain wedding band in uh, a food service kitchen. A plain wedding band with no diamonds, um, no cutouts, no filigree, nothing fancy. Um, it allows you to you know, still have a, a wedding band, but um, there's no room for bacteria or things to um, get stuck in the setting and then harbor bacteria. Um, you also don't want to risk losing diamonds in food products uh, whenever you're you're cooking them. Um, the watches uh, are not allowed, so really nothing um, on the hands or the arms um, or the face. So you're you're not allowed to have facial peering, piercings or ear piercings. Um, no jewelry in the kitchen at all. Uh, she also has some uh, fingernail polish on, so the health inspector would also um, cite that. So that can never be allowed in the kitchen because it can chip off and it can go into the food. Okay, so you have a job where you are making hamburgers and they put a raw hamburger patty on the grill. We know that raw hamburger can uh, harbor E. coli. So she next needs to assemble the burger. Um, is a glove change required between tasks? Yes or no? Um, yes, it would have to be. You don't want to um, basically cross-contaminate that um, lettuce or burger bun with um, E. coli from the burger. So a cook preps raw chicken. Next, he preps onions for the salad bar. Is a glove change required between tasks? Um, yes, absolutely, because those gloves are, the um, onions are ready to eat and um, they would not get cooked because they're going straight to the salad bar. So that would be a very risky situation. So Mary works in a restaurant. She has a sore throat and a fever. Should she be excluded from the operation or restricted from working with or around food. So which category does she fit in according to the book? Um, according to the book with the symptoms that she has, she should be restricted. Um, food handlers that have a sore throat with a fever um, should just not be around food, but perhaps they could do another task. Martha is a cook who is vomiting. Should she be excluded from the operation or restricted from working with or around food? Um, that is a symptom where you have to be excluded. You cannot be in the food service establishment with those symptoms. So we've got a few chefs here um, that are doing things improperly. So it's kind of a search and find what is uh, wrong with the picture. So we'll uh, go through them. So number one here, Mr. Scraggly Beard. Um, he is, uh, let's see, is he wearing gloves? Um, it looks like he's not. 
He also, he also has a, a can of soda. He has a drink here that's open and he is showing you that he's, he's touching um, his injury. So that would, that would not be something that you would wanna be doing while you're working on uh, your carrot prep here. Um, this guy here is openly sneezing all over the table. Uh, number three, let's see, what's he doing? Uh, looks like he's eating a sandwich. So he's eating right on top of the prep table. Uh, you should be eating in a separate area. So the food service kitchen, you can taste your items so with a tasting spoon, and then you would throw that spoon away. You would always want to move away from the food so that you're not eat, eating directly above it in the event that maybe something drips. Um, you would not want to contaminate the food. Um, however, you cannot um, you know, basically have dinner in the kitchen. You have to remove yourself from the food service operation or uh, food service area, move to a, a separate section. Um, there's always going to be um, a staff break room area that is dedicated for that purpose um, because it has to be away from where the food is prepared. Uh, number four, let's see what he's doing. He's kind of wiping his hands all over his apron and getting it all dirty. Um, let's see. It looks like he's also going to uh, talk. Uh, he's talking. So it says, I'm coming to help. Um, and he's going to come help number one here. So he would need to wash his hands before starting the task that uh, he's going to help number one with, because it looks like he's cutting some sort of meat. And then he's going to come over here and, and cut these carrots. Uh, see, number five, he says he does not feel good. So maybe he needs to leave um, the restaurant. Um, he is clearly sick. Um, he may have a symptom where he needs to be excluded, uh, but we need to evaluate his uh, situation to see if he can stay. Uh, number six here, uh, we have a female here and she is smoking in the kitchen. Uh, smoking is never allowed, as I'm sure you know. No fingernails, no nail polish, no jewelry. And she has all of these items. Also, her hair is not restrained. So her hair is looking lovely. It's um, outside of the hat. So uh, my rule is that anytime that you walk into a kitchen, your hair is already up in a ponytail. Um, as you can see, I have long hair, but it's always in a hat. So you never want to um, basically uh, introduce the possibility of, of hair being loose in the kitchen uh, because that can obviously get into food very easily. So you should always feel wrong walking into a kitchen uh, with your hair free. You should always have it tied up uh, or in a hairnet uh, or in a hat. So um, this kitchen needs a lot of uh, supervision to help them uh, correct all of these problems that they have. Um, so that's the end of uh, chapter three. Um, review the questions in the back of the chapter and um, get ready to take the quiz.